A Jewish man helping save Christians and Yazidis, young girls, from sex slavery. But critics say his efforts are helping terrorists. We've reported countless times on the thousands of women and children the Islamic State fighters have kidnapped since taking over parts of Iraq and Syria. Those savages forcing many of those young women and children into sex slavery. Now a Jewish businessman from Canada is making it his mission to rescue them. Steve, this is the family welcoming my daughter back. Through donations and on-the-ground brokers, the group founder says they have saved more than 120 girls, including that 22-year-old mom and her two children. But the reaction is not all positive. Opponents say the program is directly funding terrorism by paying to rescue the women and girls. Steve Maman joins us now. And some people have dubbed him the Jewish Schindler. Let me talk about him like he's sitting here. Have dubbed you. That's a reference to Oscar Schindler the German spy who is credited with saving more than a thousand Jews during the Holocaust. First of all, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Harris. How does it work? How do you bring about saving young girls from these savages? Well, uh, it takes good contacts on the ground. Um, our contacts come from Ken and Andrew White, his security team that's been with him for the past 18 years. And uh, we have the best. We have the best people there that actually negotiate with brokers on the inside of Mosul. And we make arrangements to have girls transferred over to the uh, Kurdistan side. It's as simple as that. How do you find out about these young city and Christian girls who are in trouble? Like, how do you locate them specifically? Um, our team on the ground, the CYCI team, does not locate them. We've made agreements with the uh, brokers that are in the inside uh, of uh, Mosul, the caliphate, and they actually go out and negotiate with all of the uh, different captors, whether they're civilians or ISIS uh, combatants, and they uh, find ways to negotiate their release, and they bring them back out to us, to the outside, to the the hook area. And when you bring these together, I mean, we were just watching the video. When you reunite these families, what are some of the things that you're witnessing? I mean, what kind of health are these girls in and, and what are their first challenges and struggles? Yes, in the case of the, that video you just watched, which was actually... Uh it, her release was donated by the Riva family from Bugacci uh, clothing uh, company. It was, a, uh, it was so something very impressive because we witnessed uh, a girl coming back to her village. Uh, when we took her out, she told, her that she told us her husband had been beheaded literally in front of her mm. uh, and her two children. Uh, she was taken away and that girl specifically was resold literally five times to five different owners mm. during the one year she was taken. So when we brought her back to her village, there was nobody waiting for her there because her husband, was, she knew he was dead before she, uh, she had left. And uh, the people from the, you could see the people from the village just running to see her and everybody's just crying to see her alive. It's, it's very, very difficult for us to see that. But the goal of CYCI is to reunite families and to bring them back to their villages. This is what we cater to, not to humanitarian aid, but to, but to lives. That, that's what I do. I can hear it in your voice how passionate you are about this. I sure am. Your critics say that by giving money to ISIS to get these children out of sex slavery, that you're actually helping fund the terrorists. What is your answer to your critics? Harris, my answer is very simple. I'm not funding ISIS. I'm not dealing with ISIS. I'm not talking to ISIS. I'm not paying ISIS. My team on the ground, CYCI, are paying the brokers that them go they go, they go negotiate their release. Now, what transpires there could be that they're refunding the, the, the owners of these girls, and these owners paid from 50 to $300 for these girls. So we're not funding them. We are refunding them. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, ISIS is not getting anything from it. And ISIS being a $4 billion entity, I really don't think that a two or $3,000 is going to make a difference into helping them being more powerful than they are financially. Yeah, interesting point. Um, is there anybody else that you know of that's doing this sort of thing? I mean, are you out there by yourself? No. There's uh, four other groups that are on the ground, uh, Yazidi International and a few others uh, that are... Uh, uh, th there are other groups, but uh, official groups, none. We are the only official group with a, uh, a name uh, out there. The others are individuals that want to help, basically. I see a lot of people praying for you on Twitter and, and in social media right now, saying thank you for what you're doing. Real quickly, this touches your heart. Why? Why? Uh, Oscar Schindler took out 1,200 Jews that became 15,000 today. Um, had he not acted, 
there would have been 15,000 less and, uh, and 6 million uh, that passed away after six years because the world waited. And this touches me because I'm able to act and, this, and had I not acted, I would have considered a failure because I'd every, I had everything in my hands in order to make a difference in this world and I wasn't going to wait for anybody. Um, these innocents are being uh, uh, slaughtered, they're being raped, they're being burnt. Um, yeah. I'm not going to stand idle looking at this. The Talmud says, one who saves a life saves the world. And I'm going to act by this phrase. That's it. Simple. Steve Mahmoud, thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you.